Okay, so what you did is I think you, uh, you simply pushed the electrons all the way around the ring and went straight to this. Yes. But it's better to show as many resonance structures as possible because the more resonance structures there are, the more stability you get. Okay. So now we can see why this is so much more acidic than a normal alcohol because there's not just one, but in addition to the original resonance structure, there's one, two, three extra resonance structures. It's good that you remember though that the way to determine how acid this is is to look at what it would look like after it loses the proton. So one thing that's an important skill for solving benzene problems is the ability to draw all the resonance structures for benzene ions. And of course you always want to do that by using electron pushing arrows. Ah, there's even more resonance structures that we could draw here too. Uh, because in this case, there's another resonance structure where the double bonds are in a different place. These two are equivalent to each other. You could put the double bonds here or here. So there's even more resonance structures, but uh, this gives us the general idea. So again, it sounded like on the last quiz you had a lot of acid-base problems. Were they well, things like ranking things in order of acidity? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that's what we need to focus on then. Well, we already know that if you have to rank a phenol and a regular alcohol in order of acidity, the phenol is more acidic. Acidic. Can you think of any way that we could determine which of these would be more acidic? Um, when it means acidic, does it mean taking the proton from an alpha, like from a carbon, or taking the proton from the oxygen? Okay, yeah. Well, who is the most acidic proton here? In phenol, which is the proton that wants to leave the most? The oxygen. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Um, the oxygen hydrogen is much more acidic than the benzene hydrogens. So basically what we're asking is who's more acidic, this proton or this proton? Well, can you okay. see? First one. Why would that be? Um, That's right. Why would that be? Because the alkyl group is electron donating. That's exactly right. And why does that make this compound less that acidic? That makes a negative, that makes the ability to handle a negative charge even more difficult because you have more. Very good. Very good. What we should be thinking about is you should be thinking about what this would look like after it loses the proton. Well, this is what this would look like after it loses the proton. It's not happy to have this negative charge. And you're right, the alkyl group is making the negative charge even less happy. And you remember the key idea, alkyl groups are electron donating. It's really good that you remember that, you remember that key idea. Alkyl groups are electron donating. They're, that is, they're more electron donating than hydrogens. After all, in this case, there's a hydrogen, where here there's an alkyl group. Alkyl groups are more electron donating from, for hydrogens than hydrogens. Roughly speaking, we can say that's because they've just got more electrons. This has a cloud of electrons, and this has hardly any electrons. So that one might be a rough way to remember why alkyl groups are, are slightly electron donating. Well, yeah, the fact that this is electron donating would destabilize this negative charge by pushing more negative charge in this direction. That makes this less happy, which means it's harder to lose the proton in the first place. Okay. So your analysis was exactly right. And you decided that this one would be more acidic? That's good. So it's very good that you judge that by asking whether this substituent was electron donating or electron withdrawing. That was the key thing to focus on. So incidentally, then, since this is more acidic, would that give it the higher pKa or the lower pKa? We briefly talked about pKa's previously. If you're more acidic, does that mean your pKa is higher pKa? Actually lower. Is it lower? I was thinking about the... Um, it would have higher Ka. Okay, all right. Yeah, we talked about that issue in one of the previous sessions. It would have a higher Ka, which means a lower pKa. Remember that the P means taking the negative log. Yeah. Um, however, maybe, uh, maybe I, I shouldn't even have gotten into this because um, your instructor never really seems to talk about Ka. They only talk about pKa. So maybe it would have been less confusing to leave the Ka out of it and just say it's a lower pKa. So your instructor here was using pKa's in the, uh, the notes. I don't know if he ever uses pKa's in the test, though. Mm, that doesn't really come up much. One question. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, we should remember that more acidic means a lower pKa. Now here's a more subtle, subtle problem. Both of these two compounds have alkyl groups, but they're in different positions. Mm -hmm. Now we know that these alkyl groups are going to both going to make this less acidic because they're electron donating, but we have to figure out which one of them is messing things up more. Well, let's draw what these would look like after they lose the proton. compound mm -hmm. and use electron pushing arrows to draw all the other resonance structures. We just did an example like this previously. So let's use electron pushing arrows to come up with all the other resonance structures that are possible for this compound. So let's take our time and do that. That's an important skill for this chapter. For a second. Sure. So you started by putting in these electron pushing arrows. That was good. And you noticed that these electron pushing arrows would put a negative charge on this carbon. That was good. But you can't put the negative charge in this picture. You have to draw a whole new picture where that negative charge is. I was just trying to cut back on time. Ah. Yeah. So let's, let's, for this example, let's take our time. This is an important idea. All right. um, and now in this picture, we should be able to draw new electron pushing arrows. So let's put some new electron pushing arrows in here to draw the next resonance structure. A key idea for this chapter, so let's take our time on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, confused. Okay. I, I got out of my train of thought here. Let's see. So, do you see where we came up with this resonance structure? We drew these two electron pushing arrows to show how the negative charge could move from the oxygen to this carbon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we have to start with this resonance structure and put in some more electron pushing arrows to show the next place the negative charge could be. Let's take your time. Okay, that's right. So let's draw the picture that you would get from those arrows. There should be one more resonant structure. So let's yeah. put electron pushing arrows in this picture. You need to put electron pushing arrows in this picture first. Let's put electron pushing arrows in this picture that show how many. I think you not, you not. I thought you wanted. Uh, a complete picture, and then I was going to redraw it and do it. Yeah, what you do is we use these arrows to move the negative charge from here to here. Mm -hmm. And now you can put arrows in this picture that show the next place that the negative charge can go. There's no need to just recopy okay. the same okay. picture over again. We should only have one picture for each position that the negative charge can be. Sure one picture for each position that the negative charge can be in. Mm -hmm. And once we've drawn that picture, we can put in arrows to show the next place the negative charge can go. Mm -hmm. And then we can draw that picture for the next place the negative charge can go. Okay. That's right. So now we can move the negative charge like this.
And now we're done. If we tried to move the negative charge any further, it would just end up on the oxygen again, which is where we started. So we ended up with four resonance structures here again. 